Okay, this is going to be volume three of A Fly A Day While My Wife's Away, The Challenge. Uh, using, again, eagle claw hooks. I'm going to be tying a fly called the Teleco, uh, or my version of it. i never tied it before, but I'm going to do it today. In eagle claw, I'm using the medium size. I always say you can use different kinds of hooks um, than regular fly hooks. Sometimes the fly hooks help a lot um, because of the size or the thickness of the wire um, as far as the presentation and all that stuff, but it just depends on what you're doing. In this case, I'm just practicing the tying part of it, uh, but I can still use these. Anyway, so this is one of those bait holder hooks. It's got the big barb there. And it's got the two barbs on top that need to be knocked down so they don't break my string. So I use my vise. There's a gap there. I go inside the vise with this part, clamp it down. Just use the vise like pliers. So it presses those down. So you still see the bumps, but um, they're not pointy. And then this one here, I'm going to go in and get that one also. Turn it this way. Knock that one down. Sometimes these, um, the, the points on these hooks are a little bit more brittle because the hooks are hardened, I guess. And so sometimes when you put it in there, that will actually crack. I've seen it happen on cheaper ones. These are actually usually pretty good. And then so these hooks also have the bait holder, a little twist to them. See, it's, it comes here and bends up. And then the point is exposed so that if it comes through the fish's mouth, Let's say that's the fish's mouth. It comes in and still grabs. It's not necessary for these flies, so I'm going to put this in the vise also and just kind of, kind of line that back up. Occasionally, that will also snap the hook if you just do too much bending. So, and when you flick it like that and it rings, you know it's tight. Uh, I'll be using brown unithread today. Brown unithread, 8 aught. I'll be using some yellow yarn. This is not fly tying yarn. This is just some cheap yarn that I picked up at probably Walmart or somewhere. Um, the interesting thing about this stuff is it kind of has a shimmer to it when you use it. So I've used this for some flies. There used to be some flies in Tennessee that were kind of yellowy bodied, and I'd make them out of that. Then I've also got a piece of peacock curl, and I've got a turkey feather, and I've got a brown hackle. Brown hackle cape. So, let me get started with this. I put my base layer of thread down. So this this series is just a personal challenge. It's not really a challenge much, except for just making myself sit down at the bench and tie flies and keep trying to put out videos. So I, I've kind of lost track. I think I'm at number video number 57 or 58. And if I keep this trend up with my wife being gone and me tying a fly every night, I should end up with about 65 videos. I'll still keep tying, but um, that will get me some videos in my cache there on YouTube. I do have several videos like this. I have some videos where I picked out some materials at Dollar Store and tied a couple of flies with that. I've got some where I have picked up materials that were just found um, by the water. Find a hook, find some string, find a feather and make a fly out of it. Just to see. Alright, so this... Um, Turkey feather is going to serve two purposes, and I'm actually going to be able to get it out of one 
little section here. I won't have to cut out two. So I'm just going to pull that out straight. And put that aside. This just needs a little bit of a tail to it. So. Tying the tail. I want it to stick out about like that. So I'll pinch it there. Just make a couple turns. And actually what I'm going to do here. I always like to do that and then go under. And then pull it up. It kind of helps the points stay out like that. So I'm going to go forward a little bit. And fold this back and go back. The reason I'm doing that is because once I get the other materials tied in and get them wrapped forward, this comes up over the materials and makes kind of a hump over the top, like a wing. All right, uh, next tie-in is the thread. I'll tie it in the length of the body like that. Back a little bit. You could add lead to this to make it more heavy. It would also help you fill out the body. I just didn't want to take up that time in the video. So in that case, you would wrap just wrap the lead around the hook like I, like you do the thread and once you get a bump or you know get it all the way covered then you tie in your other materials and um, wrapped it on top so I'm this is the peacock curl I'm just tying this into the side here and then going down the body again So I've gotten everything towards the front. I should have left a little bit of gap there behind the head of the hook, the eye, toward my the head at the end. That's okay. So I'm going to come to here where I want to tie off everything. This gives me some room still for my hackle at the end. I don't need that much room. Okay. So now I just wrap and this also um, so this yellow yarn you could use any color yarn uh, and make it whatever color you want and you could also change the hackle at the front you could change the tail or the wing that you're gonna use the turkey wing um, there's all kinds of things you could do with this to make it more you know suitable for what you're fishing like if there's a certain bug that looks kind of like this but it's a different color you change to change the color Alright, so I'm just going to start making turns here. I'm just going to be mindful of how thick this body is. So I just take a couple of turns at a time. So I just fatten that up a little bit like that. This also, this yarn kind of lays out flat when you wrap it. Um, you could twist it and make it more segmented if you wanted to. But in this case, the, the peacock hurl is going to do that for us. It'll make the segments look nice and pretty. And then that piece of turkey feather going over the top will sort of help... Um, Will sort of help protect the hackle in case it breaks. Not the hackle, the hurl. I'm holding my thread out of the way here on my finger so I can come in and cut this without snipping my thread. It's not a big deal if you do that, it's pretty easy to correct, but it's just annoying. And 
then I'm going to take my so I wrapped this this way right wrapping forward I want to go the other way with the hackle and go across that like this I'm just going to take these turns and make it look striped don't want to pull too hard because this stuff is not very strong shorter and you could just break that but I'm not very good at breaking them if I try to break it it'll just go crazy on me I'll usually break it off and it'll unwrap or something all right and then this piece comes over the top hopefully I gave it enough piece but that'll be fine from the side it looks fine Let's snip this off you could also if you were so inclined go back and fold it back and go back and tie it off back there I'm not that inclined So now I just work on a little bit of a head. But I still need a hackle on here. And so I'm going to take my cape and find myself a, a good size hackle for this fly. You should want the barbs. I, sometimes I pick barbs that are too big on purpose. And sometimes I just don't care. So I'll pick a barb and it'll be really a monster, you know, sticking off the top. But the idea generally is when you wrap this forward that those barbs stick out as far as the gap of the hook from there to there. That same de depth. Um, and then I'm going to take this, pull these barbs off the end on both sides. I want to go up actually where it's a little bit thinner still. I only need a couple of turns on this. I'm just making a little neck. Yeah, like that. I'm just going to tie this in. This little piece of piece of the quill of that little feather. Like that. And I'm gonna come back to there. And I'm just gonna take this hackle and wrap it a couple times. So what I need to do is use my hackle plier, because that's why I dropped it. I can't let it go and have the weight be there. So there's a hackle plier, and you just pinch the feather like that. And you just roll it forward. And you just don't pull too hard on the hackle plier, because it'll snap that feather.
And then I just want to take this and pull these back some. So I can get a decent head on here. Get a few turns of thread. Try to get all these barbs under the thread so they're not sticking forward. Like that. And then typically I'll do a half hitch like that. And then that'll just hold it until I get this on here. And this is a whip finish. Captured a couple of barbs there. When I did my whip finish, I wasn't careful. So those barbs are sticking out on the front, so I'm just going to take those back. See if this fix itself. Oh, my whip finish came undone. Well, that's no bueno. I don't have a whole lot to work with there, and I don't have a lot of room for my head. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to you know what? I've got one half hitch there. I'm going to use this. Uh, I'm just going to try to use my finger and get a half hitch on there again. I'm just going to twist that thread. Get a loop to go over there. I'm going to do a couple of those. Or just one. I'm going to leave this tag though. I'm going to leave that tag. Um, I'm going to put some nail polish on it. Hold that tag basically till it dries. So I'm not being very careful right now with my nail polish. Usually I try to avoid getting in the eye of the hook. Um, I can take my leftover piece of feather here. This is one of the one of the tricks that I use to get, especially on really small flies, because if you get on the river and you haven't been careful you find you have glue in the eye of your hook and you can't get the thread in there or the, uh, not the thread, the uh, your leader, your tippet so now I've got nail polish on the feathers let me get that off while it's still wet okay put this feather through this eye draw it through and it should take out all the any of the nail polish that got in there. And then this is already drying pretty quick, so I'm gonna go ahead and snip this off. Yeah, see. Since I messed up that thread at the end, wasn't being real careful about the paint getting on the feathers, but I think we're good. Maybe a little bit messy, but you get the idea. Could have used some more turkey feather. I had plenty. I just didn't put enough on there when I started that, so I could have thrown some more on and make it a little bit more dense on top, but that's okay. It's still there, still kind of has the look of a wing casing going on the top. It really is thin though. But that's okay. Maybe it's a honeybee now. Or a wasp. So anyway, there's my fly. Um, that is the Teleco is basically what that fly is. These feathers could also lay back. I could use a softer hackle so that it because it is a dry uh, wet fly. Um, so usually wet flies don't have the hackles that stick straight out. Although I have tied, I have used, I've used 
dry flies and I let them sink and pull them underwater and it works kind of like a like a popper or a bass fly where you have it pushing the water and making a big ordeal so this will still work for that so hope you enjoyed this fly a day while the wife's away this me tying the teleco today look forward to fishing it have a good night